goal of this show is to help you get to know your state government. This week, I sat down with State Auditor Troy Downing, a Republican from Big Sky, to learn about his priorities for this multifaceted position. I'm Troy Downing. I am the Commissioner of Securities and Insurance, also known as the Montana State Auditor. All right, Troy. So this might seem like a very basic question, but what is this job? What does the State Auditor do? You know, it's interesting. The State Auditor is probably one of the most difficult offices to run for because you always have to describe what it does. And the State Auditor is the Commissioner of Securities, the Commissioner of Insurance, and it's also one of the five land board seats that manages the state trust lands. And uh, really simply, we regulate two of the largest, most complicated industries in the state, your auto insurance, your home insurance, your health insurance, and also financial services through the securities. Well, I saw an incredible opportunity in this office because I have experience in the securities industry and I have experience in the securities industry and I care deeply about how we manage our, our state trust lands, our, our you know, Montana public lands. And this opportunity came up and I looked at that and I'm thinking, when has there been somebody that actually understands, let's say on the security side, you know, if you've been in that industry, you've seen how bad actors act, how they can take advantage of consumers, so I've seen that part. I've also seen how heavy-handed regulation can make it hard to do a business and run a business. And so having that fine line of consumer protection and allowing industry, industry to thrive was very exciting to me. And then on the insurance side, the same thing. You know, I've built a, a nationwide insurance company from the, from the ground up. And I'm not going to say I know everything about insurance, but I've got a background there with the same things of understanding you know, how to protect the consumers against bad actors and how to allow industry to thrive because, in my opinion, that is consumer advocacy. And I think there's a lot of good work we can do that affects everybody in the state. A lot of people don't realize the effect that this office has on everybody in the state and I, I take that very seriously and I'm excited about doing some good here. We have a, 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 a legislative agenda that I'm pretty excited about and some of these things are already making it through the legislature and we're getting a really good response on that. Uh, one of those things that we're working on is expanding uh, telemedicine. and just to talk a little bit about how I'm approaching this administration and, and, and approaching this process. Early on, uh, well, we saw, first of all, the, the opportunities in that space uh, under the emergency orders with the uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And we saw an expansion there. And uh, it, it works especially in rural communities when it's hard to travel or you know we've seen an incredible amount of good work on the uh, mental health side of this of being able to use uh, alternatives so you don't have to actually travel every time to your doctor so we had a bill that we were bringing forth and there were some other stakeholders that also had competing bills so early on, uh, you'll find this theme in my administration, it's very much about communication and bringing all stakeholders into a room. Early on, we got all of the stakeholders in from the, from the doctors, the hospitals, the insurers, we got everybody into a room and we said, how can we all get together behind one bill? Because everybody has different interests in, in this te uh, telehealth expansion. And you know, it was a lively conversation, but you know, a respectful conversation, and we got to the point of refining it down to a bill that everybody could live with. And so having that introduced to the legislature where you've already got all the stakeholders behind it, I think there's a very high probability of that passing and we're very excited about that. And now moving to the land board and the first land board meeting was this week, Tuesday. Yes, it was. Yeah. yeah. How was that experience for you? Well, this well, this was a this was a, a softball. It was an easy one. We we're just approving some things that have already you know come before the land board. Um, I think one of the things that came out in this land board meeting is you have two members that have a lot of business experience, and uh, myself and and the governor. And some of the questions that came up were about the processes, like how do you come up with these values? You know, really looking at it from a business side. And I think you're going to see that coming to play more and more as we get farther down the line with the land board. The land board, as I mentioned earlier, it's important to me. 
It's important that we're stewards, that we maintain these assets, that we have them forever, that we're, you know, the whole idea is of multiple use and sustained yield. Multiple use means multiple use. Let's figure out, you know, where it makes sense to graze, uh, where it makes sense to do uh, timber extraction, where it makes sense to do all the things that we do with our land. But sustained yield means you know, have a long, long uh, horizon on there. Make sure you can do it forever. Do it in a way that you truly are stewards. But the, the main point that we can't lose, uh, lose track of is this, the, the Board of Land Commissioners was set to manage these, these state trust lands to raise money for public education. And some of the concerns that I've had is seeing, you know, year over year, we saw about a $5 million drop in the money that went to our K through 12 program. So let's understand that. And when somebody is putting something in front of me saying that we're now making 5% on, uh, on, on, on these parcels and we're expecting to make three, of course I'm going to ask why. <laughs> so not every Montanan defines public lands the same way. Uh, it's it's all about equal use, but s f anglers, um, backcountry hunters, some people don't want to see um, timber sales and, and mineral extraction or right. oil and gas extraction right. or grazing on public lands. How do you balance the, um, the desires of different Montanans and the interests of different Montanans yeah, that, in making these decisions? That's a, that's a great question. That's been a big part of, uh, of my uh, campaign and what I plan on doing in, in office as well is making sure that everybody, like I was talking about the uh, telehealth bill, everybody has a seat at the table. And uh, I've been slowly putting together a, a group of interested parties from uh, the farming and ranching communities about ag and, and, uh, and grazing leases to the timber community to uh, natural resources to outfitters and guides to private property owners that you know have easement issues to um, uh, these folks building uh, trails on public lands for mountain bikes. I'm, I'm getting everybody in so that they can opine on what is reasonable and understand um, we're not always going to agree on everything, but everybody's got a seat at the table. It's going to be listened listen to and considered respectfully as we refine all these disparate interests into something that's actionable. And sometimes going back to the whole idea of multiple use, sometimes you can figure that out. Does it make sense to you know, graze part of this? Do you have some opportunity for some timber extraction? Do you have opportunity to put uh, hiking or horse or mountain bike trails or whatever that that interest is and really looking at this um, holistically as what are all the options and what are the best practices one thing that I want to make clear is this office and I personally represent Montana and everybody has a seat at the table and again I encourage that conversation of reaching out let me know what your ideas are what's working what's not because that is part of the conversation and uh, we're past the campaign cycle and now we're administrating this office for the benefit of all Montanans no matter you know where you come from what your political background is anything and I really encourage respectful dialogue so that we can solve problems together. That's all the time we have this week. Thanks for joining me for another installment of the Rundown Capital Report. If you'd like to get in touch with me about any questions, comments, or concerns, my email is jackie at montanapbs.org. I'd love to hear from you. See you next week in Helena.